Ahoy you scurvy dogs and welcome back to Trick Bricks. I'm Jamie and today we're going to take another step in our epic 30th anniversary Pirates retrospective series by having a look at set number 6270 Forbidden Island. Released in 1989, it came with 182 pieces, 4 minifigures, and retailed for $37.50 in the US. This is one of my favorites from the original wave and it's just a straight up classic pirate set. I do have the instructions featuring this beautiful original box art at the top with its bluish purple sky and island background and an alternate shot of the set down here. On the back up here we'll find yet another picture of the main feature and then two very cool alternate builds that both would have made worthwhile sets in their own right. Not something I get to say all that often. But let's put this aside and take a look at the real thing. As I stated a few episodes ago, I love the tropical Caribbean feel of all the pirate sets, and this one has that in spades. To start, we're given this awesome base plate with printed island design. With exception to modular buildings, we rarely get base plates in sets these days, and we never get them printed like this, so it's definitely cool to have in the collection. And I guess we'll work our way around the beach here, where it looks like our pirates have just unloaded some booty in the shade of these palm leaves. Eight pieces of gold seems like a pretty decent haul for an honest day's pirating, but these chromed elements are another favorite of mine, and whenever I'm shopping on Bricklink, I always pick up as many as I can when they're available, so I can add a few extra to all my treasure chests. But someone's bound to come along and try to steal all this plunder, so our band of miscreants has set up this cannon to defend their hard-earned loot. This is the shooting type, but whichever version your set comes with, shooting, non-shooting, or transitional, you still get some ammunition in the form of these black 1x1 round bricks. A few more weapons are stored in this barrel here, a musket, and two cutlasses, for when the fighting turns to close combat. And what do our jolly pirates do when those unwelcome guests arrive? Assuming they survive the barrage of weaponry, they'll get thrown in the brig, of course. You've got barred cell doors on each side, and plenty of room between them for housing a few prisoners. And if we keep spinning this around, we'll see lots of open space down here for the crew to hang out and plan raids. And thanks to the printed base plate, you've even got a little pool in the center. You could definitely improve on this area with parts and accessories from your own collection, maybe adding some food stores, bunks, or weapon racks. A lone palm tree stands guard at this corner, and then finally we'll find a stairway leading to the second level. This is a single piece, specialized element that you don't see anymore, so it's another cool addition to the parts bin. At the top of the stairs, we've got a spare musket clipped to one side, and a large Jolly Roger flag on the other. As I mentioned in the Black Seas Barracuda episode, take care when attaching these guys because the clips are notorious for snapping, and the flags themselves are kind of expensive to replace. And then we have another very specialized element, the rope bridge. I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've run across any of these in my reviews, but it certainly won't be the last. It's a very cool piece that definitely gives you a jungle vibe. Once across the bridge, we'll find ourselves in this little second story area. It features one of these printed wall elements, of which we get two in this set, you may have noticed the other one down below. And we've also got a large lantern here, and a bunch more vegetation that really adds to the look of the set in my opinion. There's a small lookout platform here for the pirates to keep watch from, and if we spin this around, we'll see that there's not much going on inside, with the exception of this trap door leading to the prison cell below. It would be a few more years before LEGO introduced the dedicated trap door pieces, so this one simply makes use of a hinge plate. To activate it, you just pull this pin on the side here, but since these hinges have a bit of built-in friction, you do have to give it some help to actually drop. But once it does, Captain Redbeard has his prize securely behind bars. The roof is littered with quite a bit more overgrowth, which I love the look of, and at the very top of the set we have a crow's nest, perched atop these mast elements and held in place by a rigging piece on each side. This whole thing is kind of the defining feature of the set, and I think it looks great jutting out amid the rocks and plants. 
And besides all that, we get this small boat, which is identical to the one we saw in the Black Sea's Barracuda. It's simple, with just two seats, a pair of red oars, and a small Jolly Roger flying from its stern. But it's a nice little addition, and a way for our crew to do some local exploring. And speaking of crew, we've got a few scalawags here demanding our attention. First up, we've got this guy with white pants, striped shirt, red bandana, and that classic mustachioed face print. For a weapon, he's given a flintlock pistol. And a special shout out to Trick Brick subscriber Captain Rutledge for bringing to my attention that some of these guys were actually given names in the old tie-in comics. If I've got my info correct, this guy is called Flash Fork. And next in line is Rummy, the first mate. He's another guy we've seen quite a few times, with his brown tricorn hat, blue jacket with red and white striped shirt, and white pants. He also wields a pistol. And then we've got the king of the pirates himself, Captain Roger Redbeard. One of my all-time favorite minifigs, he's given a black bicorn hat with printed skull and crossbones, a pair of brown epaulets, a very nice torso print with black overcoat and green shirt, a hook hand on his left, and a peg leg on his right. He's got a cutlass to keep him company, as well as his trusty pet parrot, Popsy. And then we've got the captain's hapless prisoner, the Imperial Soldier. He's looking very formal in his white and blue uniform, red epaulets, and black shako hat. And although it seems that he's been relieved of all his weapons, perhaps he's got something hidden in this brown backpack that'll help him escape. And what tropical island would be complete without a monkey? Even he was given a name, Spinoza. And last but not least, a classic dark gray shark is included. Just for fun, why don't you guys try and come up with a good name for him in the comments? And of course, you can name any of these guys anything you'd like, but I think it's kind of cool that most of them were actually more than just generic pirates in the comics. Like I mentioned earlier, this is one of my favorite sets from the original wave, and I think it stood the test of time fairly well. The only things I might add would be a few interior details, such as a place for our pirates to kick back with a bottle of rum and plan their next raid, and perhaps a few more palm trees, because what set doesn't need more palm trees? But other than that, I think it's a great mid-sized addition to any collection. And I should also mention that it looks great when paired with the subject of our last episode, Shipwreck Island. If you agree with my sentiments, you'll be happy to know that you can still pick this up for a pretty reasonable price, somewhere around $50, which is only about $13 over its original retail price. As always, if you want a brand new sealed in box copy, be prepared to shell out at least 10 times that amount. But that's all for Forbidden Island. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, so you're sure not to miss the next episode in the 30th Anniversary Pirates Retrospective series. I'm happy to say that the channel has been enjoying a bit of a growth spurt over the past month, and I'd like to send a very gracious and heartfelt thank you to everyone who has subscribed, shared, commented, given thumbs up, etc, etc. Even if no one ever watched these videos, I'd probably still make them, since they're just my way of enjoying the hobby, not to mention the perfect excuse to buy more LEGO, but you guys certainly make the ride more enjoyable, so cheers to you. I look forward to sharing many more episodes with such passionate, knowledgeable, and just plain awesome people from all across the globe. But until then, this has been Jamie for Trick Bricks. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and play well!